Earlier this year, my wife and I packed up our Colorado lives and moved to Montana. It's proven to be an awesome move for us. It's a great fit and we are loving the lifestyle. As with everything, there are advantages and disadvantages. We have experienced very few disadvantages, but one has been the process of having to start over in a sense of finding new places to hunt, especially whitetails. One goal I had was to try to find a place that I could manage long term and be able to share with family and friends. There are tremendous opportunities in Montana, but like with anything worthwhile, it takes time. One of my new neighbors provided that opportunity with a chance for just the two of us to lease a property. I was excited with the offer for the two of us to start what we both hoped would be a long term chance to learn the property, manage the herd, and share with some family and friends. So we've got a couple of tree stands up and one ground blind, but now that the foliage is off and everything, I was out yesterday, worked on one of the tree stands and got a sense where I think another ground blind would make a lot of sense, really open. And uh, so we're gonna take the truck in, drop off the blind, the chairs, a few other things, bring the truck back out, and then we'll ride the uh, rogue ridges in, totally stealth, silent, everything, park them, get the blind set up, and then just hunker in for the afternoon, and then leave it up for the rest of the season. And once it's all good to go, then we'll take the bikes in and out of here and just kind of leave it undisturbed, no, uh, no vehicles in and out of here. So that's the game plan. We should be able to have about four or five hours in the blind. So I think I'm not gonna explore now. This is gonna be a year or two that we're gonna figure this thing out. Um, but obviously the river bends here. Stay there. Looks like a buck from here. Yeah, not a very big one. But he's on his feet at noon. It's always exciting. Some of that branch so we can shoot over that uh, shooting lean through there but we're sitting up high we can see almost to the river anything cruising through here we ought to have a pretty good
wind's cutting across. And nothing's gonna come from out in the open over this dike, so we'll sit here for a while, do a few rattling sequences, and see if we can get something to, to come out. So we need the big buck to do. I've got two more bucks out here. That big one never came in. He came and investigated. I'm gonna have to rattle again. And then there's another one that was working a scrape out there. I don't see him anymore. He was working right to left.
several does, just uh, never had a big one that came by. There was probably a hot doe over on that island. There were just a bunch of bucks in there, so I'm raking and scraping. Rattled up a couple of them, a couple of them pretty close. And then we got to watch this gorgeous young, young five by five for quite a while. It's ticking to a doe. We're unfortunately, pretty much out of light. Sneak out of here so we don't blow anything out. I like this spot. So we got everything to the left of us going north, so anything in that island area. Up in here where we've been seeing those when we sat last night, we ought to be good. And anything across the river is going to have to cross. I was planning on hunting a fair amount over the next few days. I was willing to give it some time to learn some more, enjoy the property, and find what was the right deer for me. We didn't know a lot about the property, but we did know there were a lot of deer. We knew that we needed to take several does off the property, and we felt this was a great opportunity to take out friends and family to help manage the herd. This afternoon, I took out my daughter, her boyfriend, and his brother out for a doe hunt. It was a great chance to spend some time together and hopefully take a few does home. Needless to say, we had a successful doe hunt. 
More importantly, we had a ton of fun together. They knew the hunt didn't end after pulling the trigger, and they worked together late into the night processing their deer and now have months worth of meat in their freezers. See those far trees mm -hmm. that you can kind of see? You can set up there. When you're looking back this way, it's all open up to us. Oh, really? really sweet. My neighbor Ryan and I enjoyed working together to learn the property and hang some cameras and tree stands. Our hope was to have a long-term lease on the property and help to manage the herd. Before my hunt was over, we learned we were not going to have that chance. Leases can be great, but they are also dynamic and things can change, sometimes quickly. Although I wasn't able to capture the remainder of my hunt, we did have a fun season and I was able to take a great deer at the end of it. Well, it's cold and it's a bit windy. But I've probably already seen 10 or so bucks. Rattled some in, some have just been cruising, some have been sniffing does and running off. But uh, I feel like it's only a matter of time. I've passed on some good bucks the last couple of days, but there's about three here that I'm kind of holding out for. Well, that just happened. I've seen 10 or 11 bucks. And uh, the really tall brow tined eight came in. He actually came in almost downwind, right by some cedars in a gap. Watched him uh, do a licking branch on the cedar. Waited, wait till he got broadside and let him have it. I can see him laying dead over there, so I can't believe it finally happened. My big list, just a cool, unique buck. Giant brow tines. He's right up here. What a cool buck. What a cool buck.